Um, we got a good letter from the Surrettes um, today, April, dated April 18th, and uh, he's headed home this Friday back to Mauritius. Uh, he'll be there for 10 weeks of chemotherapy and then back to Australia for some treatments in July, and then he'll have a more of a prognosis as to what's what's going on. So have a read of that. There's a, a whole list of things that they're they're thankful for, and then uh, as well a, a letter from the Smiths in uh, New Delhi and uh, some photos and things. So I'll put these over here, and that'll be a blessing for you to read those and and to pray for them. If you have the notes tonight, there's there's kind of a summary of some of the, of the things we've, we've been looking at um, with Satan's opposition and uh, God's uh, answers to it. Each one, uh, we've used a, a different Bible person to, to illustrate it. You know, Satan is the great deceiver. We saw that in, in Eve, uh, targeted her mind with lies, and I just wanted her to ignore God's will or to be deceived as to what what the right thing was to do. And our defense is the Bible. God has given us the truth. And it's so important for us to, uh, to have a, a faith in even some, sometimes things we won't understand. You know, why that would be. But uh, we need to, to believe God's word. Uh, Satan is the destroyer. We saw that illustrated in Job. The, the man Job, has, as God allowed him to attack Job's body and uh, the suffering that was, that was there. And... Uh, I think the, the, uh, the purpose there is to, Satan wants to make us impatient with God's will. And uh, our, our defense is, is grace, God's grace. Just had somebody waving to me outside there. Uh, in 2 Corinthians uh, 12, it, it talks about uh, my grace is sufficient. You know, when Paul was going through, through physical things. And, you know, we all have things that affect our mind and our bodies. And Satan wants to use those uh, to cause us to sin and to get us out of, out of God's will. Satan is also the ruler. And we saw that with David, how that rather than doing what God wanted him to do, David did what he wanted uh, to do. And the target was his will and the, the weapon is, is pride. He wants us to be independent, and the, the, the key there, the defense, is the Holy Spirit. God's Holy Spirit will, will help us. And then fourthly, uh, we looked at the accuser. Satan is the accuser. This is a less familiar person in Scripture. They're in um, the second to the last book of the Old Testament. Uh, Zechariah, was chapter 3 it was. Uh, Joshua, the high priest, rep really representing Israel and uh, using accusation. Satan, Satan wants us to focus on our sin rather than God's forgiveness. And man, it's a potent weapon because we all sin. And he's got, he's got things he can drag up and, and bring back to our, our minds and, and you know, use against us. Now, one of my favorite verses on that is Romans 8.1. There's therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Christ has taken our condemnation. So in all of these, we, we see his weapons. And that's why the Bible says we're not ignorant of his devices. You know, we're not ign ignorant of how Satan works. And we need to be knowledgeable as well as to how God protects us from these things. You know, use the Bible. Uh, be thankful for God's grace. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Realize that Jesus is praying for us. You know, Jesus is our advocate. You know, as great of an accuser as Satan is, Jesus is greater. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And, and we come down to this. The key to all of this is faith. Now, that's really what Satan is attacking, is, is our faith. Now, I think I'm right in saying everybody lives by faith. The difference is the object of their faith. I've left that blank there. The difference is their object of their faith. Everybody trusts something usually themselves or somebody, you know, they put their faith in a situation. I meet people all the time whose faith has been destroyed because it wasn't in Jesus. And the, the thing you need to say to people like that is, well, you need a new faith in someone that's faithful. 
You know, a lot of times it's a situation they've had their faith in or a person or, or themselves. And, you know, if your faith is in yourself, you're going to disappoint yourself more than once. <laughs> um, the key is the object of our faith. Let's, let's turn to 1 Thessalonians there, chapter 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. Great chapter on, on this subject. As Paul is talking to the church there at Thessalonica, he's particularly talking to them about standing by faith. 1 Thessalonians 3, I'll, I'll read most of the chapter. I, I have written in my notes on the side, the key word in this chapter is establish. The word establish, you'll see it there in verse 2 and later on. Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone, and sent Timotheus, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ, to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith, that no man should be moved by these afflictions. For yourselves know that we were appointed thereunto. For verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass, and you know. For this cause... When I could no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter have tempted you, and our labor be in vain. But now when Timotheus came from you unto us, and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, and they have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us, as we also to see you, therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all our afflictions and distress by your faith. For now we live if ye stand fast in the faith. He's talking here about taking a stand, and uh, really in, in those first few verses, he talks about uh, the, the enemies of standing are basically the world, the flesh, and the devil, and uh, you know, he, he hits on, on all of those, uh, but he says that the, the key thing is to stand, and we stand by faith. Verse 9, for what thanks can we render to God again for you, for all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God, night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Yeah, we do. We're always growing in faith. We always have things we can learn. And uh, they were a good illustration of people standing by faith. And it, as, as you go on down, we won't read the whole chapter, but basically the motive to standing is the last few verses that Jesus is coming again. To the, verse 13, to the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, with all his saints. See, Satan doesn't want us to stand by faith. If he can distract us from faith. He doesn't care what we turn to as long as it's not faith in the Lord. And it's not just faith, it's faith in, in the Lord. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 9, uh, according to your faith, be it unto you. In Matthew 13, it says, he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. You know, a lot of times we don't see the work of the Lord taking place because we're not willing to believe. Uh, in Romans 1, he talks about going from faith to faith. Yeah, faith will lead to faith. And the, the problem is we, we miss out, and pretty soon we're, we're going from unbelief to unbelief instead of from faith to faith. It builds on itself. So tonight what we're looking at really are four practical tests of faith. Just some things that we can help us to see, am I living by faith or, or not? Am I living by faith in the Lord or not? The first one is, Am I doing this for the glory of God or just to please myself? I've left some blanks there, and sorry if that's a problem to you, but uh, I'll give you something to do. Uh, am I doing this for the glory of God or just to please myself? And that's, that's a real key question. Uh, the verse, uh, I think I might have listed it there, is Romans 4.20, when it talks about uh, Abraham and, and particularly Abraham, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. It's talking there about how God had promised he would make a nation, make many nations through Abraham, a man who had no children. <laughs> uh, but he, he believed that, that the Lord could do that. Uh, am I doing this for the glory of God or just to please myself? In, uh, in Luke it, 1, it says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. Matthew 19 says, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. So it's not just faith. See, the world talks a lot about faith. Faith, you know, you need to believe in yourself. Or, yeah, sometimes it's even more generic. Just believe. <laughs> and you say, what? <laughs> just have faith. Well, that's, that's not. 
that's not the right thing. It, it's, it, it's incomplete. It's faith in the Lord. With God, all things are possible. Not just faith, uh, faith in God. So the first one is, uh, am I doing this for the glory of God or just to, to please myself? Uh, in Romans chapter 4, he, he takes several verses there and talks about the, the faith of Abraham and Sarah when God said that they would have a, a child. And it talks about uh, Abraham, who is the, the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Um, he said, I've made thee a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the, the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope, this is uh, Romans 4.18, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Verse 19, And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And, and there's the key. He was, he was doing it for the glory of God. It wasn't, oh, you know, I, I believe I can be the father of a great nation. No, God had told him he would be the father of a great nation. And that's the difference. Uh, sometimes I, hear, I talk to people who they, they have a belief in something that they've just thought up. I believe I can do this, or I believe this should happen, or whatever. But it's not from the Bible. You know, God, there's nothing, there's not some scripture that said, you'll do this, or this will be true for you. Uh, and we need to be careful that we're, we're living by faith, not by fancy. Um, his motive was giving glory to God. So the first one is, am I doing this for the glory of God, or just to please myself? Sometimes it's hard to discern between those. The second one is, am I rushing ahead impetuously, or am I willing to wait? Does anybody know how many years Abraham and Sarah waited between the promise and the fulfillment? I can't remember. It seemed like it was either 20 or it was a long time anyway. Well, he was, he was like about 80 and then he was about 100 when, when they, they were born or something like that. But it, it was a long time. Um, so he, they, were, they had to wait, didn't they? In uh, Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12, he says that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. You know, sometimes we, we get in a hurry and so we're, we're sloppy, we're slothful. You know, we just, we want it. It's like, the, it's kind of a strange statement where people say, I want patience and I want it now. <laughs> you know, that, that's a joke. Because... Uh, it's through, it's through waiting that we get, we get patience. Faith and patience go together. And when we get in a hurry, uh, that's when we, we often mess up. I'm rushing ahead impetuously. Or am I willing to wait? Uh, Romans 10 says, For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. That doesn't apply exactly, but indirectly. What it's talking about is, and when we wait on the Lord, we won't have to look back and say, Oh, I wish I'd have waited. I wish I'd have done it different. I wish I hadn't been in a hurry. Um, true faith is not in a hurry. There's a, a psalm. When I read it, you'll, you'll probably know most of it already. It's Psalm 27, 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. And you know, as Christians, we need to be careful that we're not in a, in a hurry. We're not rushing ahead of the Lord. We need to be willing to wait. Um, you know, Abraham and Sarah, even, even, though, even though they lived by faith, they did go through a point where they decided they could work out God's will themselves. Where Sarah told Abraham, well, you just take my maid and you know, we're not having a child, so you have a child with her and, and uh, caused, caused a lot of trouble. Uh, hurrying brings uh, fleshly unbelief. There, there's a verse in... Um, Romans 14, verse 23. Find that here. Romans 14, 23 says, He that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. And he's relating it to what we eat and how it can offend someone by, by what we eat. 
but we can apply it to, to this situation. Uh, just anything that's not of faith. If something as simple as eating, we don't eat by faith, he says that's not right. <laughs> Interesting. He says in, in these decisions of life, uh, we need to do it by faith. Not just because, uh, I often say to people, just because you have an opportunity doesn't necessarily mean it's of the Lord. I'll point one out in just, just a moment. But uh, uh, true faith is not in a, in a hurry. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by faith, not by sight. We need to be careful that we're not just rushing, that we need to stop, uh, at least pray about it, <laughs> you know, think about it, um, and see what, what the Lord would do. So am I doing this for the glory of God or just to please myself? Am I rushing ahead impetuously or am I willing to wait? And then thirdly, can I, can I defend what I'm doing from the word of God? Not just can you defend what you're doing. <laughs> Some people are real good at arguing. They can defend anything. But uh, can you defend it from the word of God? A verse we often use here, Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Uh, Neville, could you go and ask Mark to stop waving at the back door for me, please? Very distar distracting. He's welcome to come in. <laughs> Can I defend what I'm doing from the, from the word of God? Um, I've been reading through 1 Corinthians, and 1 Corinthians 3 uh, starting in verse 17, he, he talks about this kind of thing that there's a lot of things in life we do because people do it. If you watch people, if you look at people, you'll see things, you'll think, why in the world would someone dress like that or do that to their body? Or, you know, they're just things people do. And you see them in history as well. Where you, you think, whoa, why would, you know, why would people wear these, years ago they used to wear the wigs and things? You know, why would they do that? It seems so weird. Uh, and there's a, there's a lot of things that people do just because other people do it. And uh, we need to be careful that that's not how we live our Christian life. There's a certain conformity when as a group we're doing things, but we need to be careful we're not just doing it because we're doing it. We need to do it by faith. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3, verse 17, that's a long explanation for starting that verse, but... Uh, he says, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in his own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come, all are yours. And you're Christ's and Christ is God's. We have great, yeah, there's great liberty in those, those verses. He's just saying, now, the point we're making here is, can we defend it from the word of God or is it just something we're doing because everybody does it? And we need to be careful that we're not living from men's wisdom, that we live, live by God's wisdom. Here, here's the uh, illustration. Um, Jonah, he could have said, well, it must be God's will. There's a boat waiting. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, you know, God, why would God give me this opportunity if he didn't want me to, to take it? <laughs> uh, but we know, if you know the story of Jonah, when he got in that boat, he was running from God. He wasn't doing God's will. And we need to be careful that we're, we're not just doing things, but we're doing them by faith. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Uh, there's a, a verse, I think it's in Galatians, where he, he talks about, is God convinced? You know, do we persuade God or do we persuade men? Yeah. We can persuade ourselves, but is God convinced? Can I defend what I'm doing from the word of God? And then, fourthly, as I contemplate this move, do I have joy and, and peace within? Probably even more than as you contemplate, but as you do it. Um, Romans 15, 13 says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. In Colossians 3, 15, he says, Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. We don't want to do things that God's Word and God's Holy Spirit encourage us not to do. It's hard enough to do the things God's Word and God's Holy Spirit encourage us to do. <laughs> you know, 
you're Christians, you know. And there's times when the Lord's telling you to do something. Oh, oh, Lord, do I have to do that? Uh, it's hard enough to do what's, what's right. Uh, don't compromise your conscience and compromise your, uh, your Christian faith by doing the things that God's Word and God's Holy Spirit don't want you to do. And, and we, have to, we have to learn to distinguish between our emotions and the work of the Lord. And sometimes it, it's difficult. Uh, there's certain natural fears and anxieties, but when you're doing the will of God, God turns that into joy and peace. You, you see, oh, that was the right thing to do. I'm, I'm glad I did that. Now, if, if you illustrate these, for instance, from Abraham and Sarah, when, uh, when they decided that Abraham should have a child with Hagar, you know the story. God had told Abraham and Sarah they would have a, a child. They'd have children. They'd be the father of, of nations. Nothing was happening. Ten years, let's say 20 years. Man, that's a long time. It's a long time, isn't it? <laughs> you know, 20 years ago, I was 45. Man, I was young. <laughs> uh, 20 years from now, I'll be 85, Lord, if the Lord tarries and I live that long. Whoa. Uh, yeah, that's a long time. And so they decided, um, sounds like Sarah was more the, the initiator. Uh, Abraham, you just take my maid and you have a child with her. Well, uh, did they do that to glorify God? You know, here's, here's our test. Did they do that to glorify the Lord? I don't think so. Were they willing to wait? <laughs> well, they'd been waiting. <laughs> I mean, how much does God expect? Until the right time. Uh, was it based on the revealed word of God? And they had a message from God, Hagar's the one? <laughs> no. Whoops. Sorry, Sarah was wrong. Hagar. <laughs> No, God doesn't make mistakes. Was there joy and peace as a result? Boy, not then and not now. If you know the trouble in the Middle East, that's where it started. Uh, boom. Very difficult. So you can, you can apply these things to a, a specific situation. Uh, as well, uh, consider the different people that we listed in you know, the things that, that Satan uses against us. For instance, David. When he, when he numbered the people, that was the, the one we looked at, uh, did he do that for his, his own glory or for God's glory? Did it for his. It, was it Joab, I think, that was working with him? And, and he said, basically, he said, don't do this. God could give you twice as many people if that's what you want. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, he wasn't applying these, these areas of faith. He wasn't doing it for God's glory. Pride is an enemy of faith. And listen, it, it's, its head will spring up at the most inconvenient times. And say, sometimes over seemingly little trivial things. But listen, uh, pride is, is not your friend. Uh, pride is an enemy of faith. You know, the world has made it to where humbling yourself is a bad thing. You think about it. Oh, I was so humiliated. Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah, and that's hard. It's hard for me too. Uh, but we need to be careful that we're not living for pride, that we live for God's glory. Job. Now, people debate as to uh, whether he had a problem or what his problem was, but Satan was tempting him to be impatient. His wife, you know, saying, you know, just get it over with. Uh, impatience basically means unbelief. If we can't trust God with time, what can we trust him with? Uh, Eve, was she guided by God's word? No. Uh, and Satan was working his trick to, to try and deceive her. True faith is always guided by God's word. And you'll, you'll find many of the cults and the different groups, they'll distort God's word. And, and the Bible talks about that. We're, you know, Paul said, we're not like those who distort the word of God. And we need to be careful that we're, we're true to, to God's word. Uh, the illustration that was used from the Old Testament of Joshua, the high priest, uh, Israel didn't have peace and joy because Israel was in sin. And that was the situation that when he was the high priest. You know, Satan opposes us. And we've seen some of the things he uses. He, he deceives, uh, he destroys, he, he tries to rule us, uh, he tries to, uh, he accuses us. Uh, but God has given us defenses in all of these. He's given us the Bible. We can search God's word and know the truth. He's given us his grace. 
It's amazing, the grace of God. He's given us the Holy Spirit. He's given us the fact that Jesus is our advocate. Jesus is praying for us. Jesus is representing us before the throne. Yeah, that's an amazing thing that we need to, to latch on to. We need to use the defenses that God gives us. Uh, seek the glory of God. Patiently wait on the Lord. Follow the word of God. You know, that thing of patiently waiting, you'll find that quite often right before you're going to get God's best, Satan will offer you his, his best. And you take that and you'll miss out on, on God's best. And many a person has done that. Um, well, God's, God's good and he'll, he'll make good out of, uh, out of our messes, but uh, you're better off to patiently wait on the Lord. Follow the word of God. Uh, enjoy God's joy and peace and look for it. And like we read there in Thessalonians, you know, live, live by faith. Uh, just read you a couple of verses and, and we'll quit. 1 Peter 5, verses 8 and 9. It's where he says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith. See, that's the key. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, he'll, he'll strengthen, establish, settle you. Missed out a few things there, but mainly resist steadfast in the faith. Now that's, that's the key that we're looking at here. Satan has his tools, Satan has his, his weapons, but greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And we're not ignorant of his devices. So we need to live and stand by faith. Any comments or, or questions? I've gone a little longer than I normally do tonight. But... Yeah, I found it interesting, the one where he's the ruler, where he, he gets us to go against God and think that we're, you know, it's us doing it, but we're following him. <laughs> he's very clever. Did I see another?